Hi everyone, Brightbone here, back with another episode of the Weekly Purple Team. And this week we're going to take a look at CVE 2025-24054. Why are we taking a look at this? Well, because number one, it's very interesting, the attack vector that it uses. It is simply you touch the file and your SMB credentials will be sent somewhere. So it's a true forced authentication. This one was also just added to the CISA Kev. Uh, it, vulnerability came out in late March, but... You know how that is, especially with vulnerabilities of this level. This one was a 6.4 or 6.5, which is very low. Uh, that typically means that organizations may not have prioritized this for patching. If you haven't prioritized this, you probably should. Now, this one was used around March 20th and 21st in a campaign that targeted government and private institutions in Poland. Uh, it was a mouse spam Dropbox link. So we're going to purple team this, we're going to do the red, and we're going to do the detection because I find this one very interesting and it's also a misconception a bit. Notice when it says steals NTLM credentials. When many people think NTLM credentials, they think the NTLM hashes that are in the SAM file. That is not the case here. This is the net NTLM hashes the hashes that have gone through the NTLM one-way function and are very, very long. So if you've ever seen Responder, it's the very, very long hash that they would get. So the only thing that the adversary can do here is try to crack this, right? So if they have it, they can attempt to crack it. They can't pass it. They can't do anything. Now, what I'm going to show you is if they have a foothold inside your network, how bad this could be, right? If they've got a foothold already and they're doing this, it's much, much more dangerous. But if they don't, basically what they would get is this is implying that you haven't patched and you're not blocking SMB outbound is they would get a very long hash that they would have to attempt to crack. Right? So not a huge amount of danger here for most modern organizations that have taken the basic steps. But this one's very unique and it's confused a lot of people that I know. So I'm going to go ahead and we will purple team this one out. So let's take a look at our Cali box. We've got our weaponized POC here. We're just going to take and we're going to create uh, a library MS file, which is basically if you touch it, it relays the credentials to whatever's in that file. Pretty simple. So we'll go Python 3, POC.py, and we're going to create one called putty. Right? It'll create exploit.zip, and inside there will be a file called putty that will be our library MS file. So we'll do that and see it says, file putty library ms created and it puts it into a zip file exploit.zip here right i'm simply going to rename that to putty.zip because that is now our weaponized file now we got to get this to the user how do we get it to the user you fish them how do you get by through a lot of modern phishing utilities or a lot of modern spam prevention utilities you obfuscate and you relay right so my favorite technique as of recently, and I've seen adversaries use this as well, is putting it in SharePoint or OneDrive. And then if you send it through 365, they're never going to quarantine their own stuff, right? So you can do that. And then you can use URL shorteners to get by some of the, uh, you know, scanning of URLs. And then you'll get by in most cases. So I've done just that. Uh, if we come over here to Win10 Host 8, we have an email here that says, hey, this is Brian from the security team. I got an alert. You're using an out-of-date version of Putty. Please download an update to the version I put in SharePoint. Here's the link. And you can see there's our shortened URL link. That shortened URL link redirects to OneDrive, right? So most everything is not going to realize that this is a problem. They're gonna, it's going to say, yeah, that goes right through. So we are emulating the adversary having a foothold inside your network just to see how bad this can get. So how bad can it get when you can relay NTLM? Very bad. So what we're going to do, we're going to do NTLM Relay X, and we're going to relay to the Certificate Authority. Right? So here's our Certificate Authority, our SMB support, our ADCS, and our template. We're just going to get a user certificate of this user. Now, it depends on who you target. Right? If you know an organization is not patched for this, and this is a, a penetration test, and you have a foothold, target all their admins. Get user certs for the admins. See where you get, right? Because you're going to get everything. You're going to get the NT hash from the SAM when we're done here. 
But we'll go ahead and we'll set up our relay. Jump over here to Win 10 Host 8, and then we'll go ahead and we'll click the link. And we'll do what it tells us to do. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to click the link. Many users will do this. And you can see right here, it takes us into OneDrive, and we have PuTTY. So now we'll just choose Download. And notice, it's going to download. No Defender here. No, nothing's here for it to scan. It's just a simple zip with a library MS file. We open it up. Here's our folder. And now we do Extract All. The moment you extract this and you touch it, it's going to relay. Right? So we'll go Extract All here. Extract. And boom, you can see the library MS file here. The person probably just thinks, hey, this is weird. It's a broken version of PuTTY or something strange, right? They're probably not going to know that they were just exploited. Come back over here to Cali. You can see we now have our relayed certificate. And we can do Control C here, clear this out. And we will have a certificate for Wanda Maximoff over here. We have our PFX file. So we relayed those net NTLM hashes because we had a foothold inside the network. If we didn't have a foothold inside the network, we'd be having to crack this. And that's not going to work very well for most people. If, you, if the adversary has a foothold, this becomes ultimately more dangerous. And us as purple teamers, we need to make sure that we're seeing how dangerous it can get, right? And how we can detect it. So we have our PFX file. The next step is just to pass this PFX file into the domain and get the true NT hash of this user. To do so here, we're just going to do certify. So we have certify ID, auth, PFX. We're giving Wanda Maximoff's PFX that we just got here. We'll give it the DCIP. We have the username from what was relayed. And then we have the domain from what was relayed as well. So we'll do certify ID here. And now we have the user's NT hash, which we can now pass. So we can do pass the hash now. Not limited to what we can do with the PFX. You can do quite a bit with a certificate. But you can do more with the NT hash. You pass that all around the network. It's hard to detect. You can RDP to things if done right. So I've shown a lot of that in previous videos. But this is how dangerous it, this exploit can get, right? On its surface, it's not so bad. But if they have a foothold in your network, yeah, this can get pretty bad. All right, so that's the red side. Let's take a look at the blue. Now the blue gets interesting because we get into detection of usage. If the user, if the user is just straight exploited and there's no relay and there's no foothold inside your network, this one is very, very tough to detect, right? They would have to report, hey, we saw this weird email, the file existence, and then the lack of vulnerability. Now, if you have Sysmon, you can look for file creation events. And so if we go here, we can do event code 11 and file path and look for putty.zip. This is assuming the user has reported this. And here you can see we've got some that are putty.zip. It may be multiple users here. But if we look here, you can see... Uh, yeah, there is the zone identifier creation for putty.zip and the download from MS Edge right there. So you can find it that way. This is implying you have sysmon, you have event ID 11, and you have file creation events coming into your sim. Otherwise, you're looking at forensic artifacts here. You're on the host, you're doing some kind of evidence of execution. Um, you're looking for file creation. That can be challenging. This mod's the easy way. Just do that. Okay. So, if we are looking for the relaying of this, first, we would look for certificates being granted. So, we would want a 4887 event with the user. So, if we know they're exploited, we could do 4887, and we could look for Wanda. We can see here, here is certificate services had a request and issued a certificate. So that means that a certificate was recently issued for this user. So what would you do here? You would go revoke this certificate quickly, right? And we can see it's Wanda Maximo. Okay. Now, how do we know if they pass this back in to get the NT hash? 
well quite simply you can look for event code 4768 and look for the usage of that certificate so if we do event code 4768 and we do the cert serial number existing you can see all the authentications that were done with certificates this is not common unless you're using windows hello if you're using windows hello this does become fun you could look for wanda maximov authenticating with that certificate as you can see here right here we have our authentication with this certificate as you can see right here hack lab win 2022 ca certificate the certificate serial number and the thumbprint and up here we have the account name of wanda maxim so this means that they now have the nt hash so at this point they're resetting the password of this user and forcing the nt hash to be invalid so that's how deep the rabbit hole goes with this particular vulnerability it's an interesting one so i thought i'd showcase it maybe not as you know crazy as some of the other techniques that i've shown over the past recent weeks but i feel like this one was enough that people didn't understand it and i should cover it so once again thank you for watching and hack the planet to defend better